back in Australia. Yeah. Uh, talk about just kind of being back here and what it means to have this opportunity to fight in Australia. Uh, I'm excited. I love fighting in Australia. Um, I fought last year in Adelaide and that was amazing just to have the hometown you know, crowd just cheering me on. Um, it's really cool just to be able to fight in Australia and just kind of like I'm at home right now. I'm literally at home, like, so I know where everything is. So it makes everything a lot easier and a lot more convenient. So, um, and it's always cool. Like the Australian crowds are always like crazy, crazy fans. So being a hometown girl and being fighting in Australia, like it's, it's amazing. I mean, part of the thing with fighting is that you do get to travel around and, you know, obviously Las Vegas is the fight capital of the world. So how would you like to see as your career grows? I mean, do you want to be on every Australian card the UFC comes or do you feel like you, you kind of want to be out and maybe get in the spotlight somewhere else? Um, I, I want to stay busy and obviously like UFC doesn't come to Australia very often. So I definitely want to be on all the Australian cards. Like I love fighting here. I love being able to have my teammates and my family come and support me as well. Um, but I just want to fight. I just want to fight as active as, as Possible. So yeah, I'll fight all over the world. You know, I was scheduled to fight in Scotland last year before I got injured. So that was gonna, that was pretty cool to be able to like visit Scotland and um, fight there and stir up the, <laughs> stir up the Scottish fans. But yeah, that didn't happen. Talk about that. I mean, decision to, to pull out of a fight. It would, it would have been a, it was a big card. It was a lot of fun. It was a great yeah. atmosphere. Talk, what, what happened to you exactly and what's the decision versus, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't get through this? Um, so I was still trying to fight. Um, it was like two weeks out and I had like really bad pain in my hip and I just thought it was like tendons or something. And I'm like, I can just numb that shit and just, you know, I was ready to fight. It was literally the weight cut was all I had to deal with. Um, but the pain just wouldn't go and my legs started like giving out from under me when I was trying to put my weight on it and it was really bad. Um, so I ended up sucking it up and getting an MRI and I had fractured my femoral neck. So like that's the femur, that's where it goes into your hip socket. This was cracked. It was like only a little bit cracked, but then I cracked it further. So I ended up having to have surgery and had three screws put in it to hold it all together. Um, that sucked, you know, I was on crutches for four or five months, um, not, not able to use my leg at all. So it was pretty shitty, pretty shitty time. And it, it sucked, you know, to be, get ready for a fight, put in all the hard work. I literally moved my life over to San Diego for that camp and not to, you know, be able to finish it and two weeks out is, yeah, sucky. Wow. Are the screws, they just stay in there? Yeah, I've got three screws and they just stay in my hip now. Um, everything's like been rehab, like rehab and recovery has gone like to plan, like it's gone perfect. So pretty, it's like a big injury to come back from and it's like I'm actually a better fighter now. I had more chance more time to work on my skill set and things instead of just training my ass off. You know, I got to uh, slow things down and actually take it in and I feel like I've evolved as a fighter. Like this, this injury, as much as it sucked, it was a blessing in disguise. Do, I mean, is it something that happened during camp, you think? Or do you may, maybe you were dealing with it for a while or? Um, no, it was through camp. It was, it's called the female triad syndrome or something. I don't know, the surgeon told me it's uh, where you're malnourished and overtrained and you just, something breaks. So I was cutting a lot of weight. Um, I was having trouble with my weight at that point in time, just nothing was working. So I was running a lot, trying to burn calories, trying to get the weight off to make weight. And my hip just blew out on me pretty much. <laughs> wow. You talked about the emotion. I mean, I think all fighters are like that. You know, the camp's the hard part, the fight's the fun part. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of it too is it's also the financial part as mm -hmm. well. So how hard was that? I mean, to not yeah. have a fight all this time, has, has, it, has it been tough for you? Yeah, it's been really tough. Like I'm excited to get out here and um, I'm coming for that bonus, you know? <laughs> come for that knockout and give them no choice but to give me the bonus but yeah it was sucky I put so much money into that camp um, relying on getting a fight purse and then that didn't happen so I lost a lot of money and plus uh, like you have to pay like a certain amount of insurance to get covered and you know so I lost a lot of money just through an injury and it's pretty shitty but um, you know I have sponsors and people that are really helping me out and, and helped me get to this point where I could start another camp and get a really good camp going so I'm excited to go out there and make some money. Cool. San Diego, uh, talk about that. You know, I know you're proud of Australia and all that, mm -hmm. but is it just, there's just not the training partners here? I mean, you, you gotta go to the States to, to, to get to the next level? Yeah, look, um, I, the way I look at it is my opponents are getting the best training in the world. Um, and right now, Australia just doesn't have that for me. Um, for MMA, if I just wanted to do boxing or just jiu-jitsu, sure, but for MMA in the whole entire game, it's just not where it needs to be right now. So. Um, I sacrifice and go over to San Diego and I train like in my eyes Alliance MMA is the best team in the world um, so you know I've got the best coaches the best training partners over there and it's just like once you experience such a good camp it's hard to go back to 
what you used to know. It's like I know like what is out there and what's you know the possibilities, and I just can't do my camps here anymore. Do you um, think? I mean, is it evolving? Do you think it'll, they'll come a point? Because I mean, there are yeah. some talented kids on the scene here, but yeah. I mean, like a guy like Jake Matthews, like he he thinks he can get everything he needs here. Do you think it's mm -hmm. it's getting to that point? Um, I feel like it's a few years behind. I feel like people that think that they can train out of Australia still and get what they need are pretty naive and they haven't really experienced what is over in the States. I get it. They want to stay in Australia. It's their country. I want to stay in Australia. I don't want to leave my boys for seven weeks and, and go over there and get my ass whooped for seven weeks. You know, it's not fun, but I just know that that's the training that I need. And anyone that hasn't really experienced it, that's, you know, that's their loss. They don't really know what, what is out there in the big wide world. So fighting in March, um, is this the soonest you were ready? I mean, obviously you had a long recovery from your injury. Is this the soonest where you were ready or was it one of those things where it's like you wanted to book earlier but they wanted to put you on this card and, and get the Australian tie? Look, I was so naive and just ridiculous in my recovery. I thought I got off crutches last year. I can't even remember what date it was. And it gave me six weeks to get ready for the November show in Melbourne. And I was like, I'm on it. I'm on that show. Sean Shelby, book me on that fucking show. Like, get me on it. And my coach is like, relax. Like, we don't even know if you can walk yet. Like, relax. And I just thought I was just going to get off crutches and get straight into it. But, you know, like, I could hardly walk. My leg was giving way. I'd lost all my muscle. Like, I was like, God, I'm a dumbass thinking I could get on that fight. So, yeah, March 20th um, is like the perfect date. It's given me a lot of time to get my weight under control. Uh, rehab my leg and just be really 100% for the fight. I, I probably wouldn't have been ready if I fought sooner. Let's talk about your opponent. Um, tough. She had a great fight last time out. Mm -hmm. um, what, do, what do you think about her? Uh, she's a tough little little southpaw. Um, she's quick. She's um, she's game. Like she will stand in the pocket and and brawl with you if she wants. Um, I feel like I'm better in all aspects. Um, I'm bigger. I'm stronger. I'm more skilled. Um, but she's tough, you know, there's, she's gotten rocked and got back up and won the fight. So it shows that she's definitely durable. Um, so I'm going to have to, she's going to bring the better out of me. I always say that the better fighters bring the better fighter out of me and that's what I'm excited for. Where do you feel like you're, you're at in your career right now? I know that you say you want to stay active, you want to move up, but mm -hmm. it was kind of a long time off. I feel like you're almost like starting over in some ways, like things have just evolved. Quickly. So where do you feel like you're at yeah. right now? I mean, do you feel like it's you're still evolving and learning or it's time to start being a contender? Where, where do you feel? Um, yeah, like in my eyes, I'm the best in the world. Um, just yet to prove it. So yeah, I'm, I'm coming for that belt. Um, so yeah, I just got to win a few fights and, and just kind of put my name on the map. Like, like I have had a bit of time off. Um, so people have forgotten me a little bit, but you know, March 20th, I'll give them no choice but to remember who I am and, and that I'm coming for that. That's awesome. I want to ask you about your, your social media presence got a great following I wonder how you balance everything because like there's like the sex sex sells side of you but the mom side of you the fighter side of you and I feel like you're trying to balance it all like how, how do you balance all that and how do you feel like your personal your persona is I guess uh, in, in online uh, my social media it's like it's pretty much how I wake up and what kind of mood I'm in <laughs> if I'm feeling myself I'm gonna put up a sexy selfie like it's just what I do and if I'm like I don't know, in mum mode, obviously, when I'm back in Australia, there's a lot of mum mode posts and me and my kids having fun. And I feel like I am all three things. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you're a mum, you shouldn't be walking around in your underwear. Oh, I'm a mum, so I can't be sexy. I can't embrace my, you know, my sexual side. It's, it's ridiculous. So I feel like I am all, I'm a fighter, I'm a mum. I can be sexy, I can put makeup on and, you know, wear high heels. I can go out and party, I can go to the beach with my kids and I can go ride dirt bikes if I want. I feel like... Um, you shouldn't have to just be one thing. So I just kind of, whatever mood I'm in, I'll, you guys see it. You yep. see me on Twitter, like just, just trolling people hard. That's when I'm in a really bad mood and I haven't eaten breakfast or something. And I just like, yeah, give it to them. But I feel like I like, I have to check people on social media because they forget that I'm a human being and they forget that I read it and they think that they can just say things and not get any backlash. So I just have to check them. People are like, why are you always fighting with everyone? I'm like, because it's fun and they need to know. You've got to put people in check. <laughs> nice. Do you, ever, do you ever delete anything? Is there everything that's been too much for you or is it pretty much whatever you think it goes out? I, I normally like troll them a little bit and then I just block them because they get really mad because they can't see my content anymore. <laughs> so I know it pisses them off. So yeah, I'll troll them for a bit and then I just block them. <laughs> that's awesome.